What's up guys, Sean here, Shock Surplus, SEMA 2022, and we're at the Toyo Tread Pass, and the first thing I've noticed was this fucking beefy Bronco by APG. <laughs> uh, we're here with George, he built this thing, everything's in-house, uh, the arms, the suspension, of course it's King Shocks with a, a tremendous system there, these fenders, uh, the fender delete with this carbon fiber lip, all in-house as well. I'm gonna let George just kind of dive into it, like, when you guys got the Bronco, what was the first thing? Where, where'd you guys start? Like all new projects, it all kind of starts with a crazy idea in your head, right? Yeah. Bronco's awesome. It, it came off the production line awesome. But yeah. what do we do? We want to push those limits. Yep. Let's take it further. Let's take it faster, harder. This was a wild track with an SAS package. You know, I try to get the most fully loaded option so yep. we can really try to work around, yeah. you know, sensors or things that would make it more complex so we can build that higher trim and everything else beneath it. You know, body is really important to us right yeah. there's a lot of incredible suspension companies out there mm -hmm. there's also great body companies but they don't you know they don't really talk to each other okay. the suspension and body and bumper companies and shock companies they just make a product for themselves mm -hmm. i wanted to have something that everything is thought out yeah. from the beginning yeah, all the way to the driver mm -hmm. full tire cycling turning in each direction compression mm -hmm. full full tuck and full droop no contact yeah. your bumper system is going to clear the tire yeah. your pinch weld your body can get you the coverage you need and yeah. Just make it more comprehensive than just slapping parts on a build. For sure. So this is designed with the intent of building more than just this one for the SEMA show. This is our approach. This is our product. We got a lot of great feedback so far. People are in love with the body. Uh -huh. You know, this is over a year in the making, yeah. using the most advanced manufacturing techniques there are. Gotcha. All right, this is not a one-off. This is a very strong aerospace grade, vacuum infused carbon fiber, gotcha. meticulously templated, dry laminated, okay. high temp epoxy injection system, yeah. CNC trimmed, okay. so you get a, a uniform perfect part every single time. When you walk up to it, now and forever, you get that same level of accuracy, yeah. and that matters. Yeah, it looks like a production vehicle with how, how <laughs> well everything matches. So overall suspension, I'm, a, I'm three and a half inches wider per side on the suspension. Okay. okay, I've got three inch internal bypass, eight inch coilovers up front, okay. race series everything, long finned, yeah. Resi's out here, okay. again, all race series. Yep. We've got another 3-2 bypass as an option. Okay. But one of the main reasons we ran this coilover size that we wanted yeah. is I wanted to be able to offer this to customers who, who don't want to run a bypass. Maybe the clicking annoys them. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to have enough shock capacity to run a 40-inch tall tire heavy and yeah. hard yeah. and not get that faded out. But if you just want to run a primary coilover and have a nice and quiet, mm -hmm. single shock, not invest in a secondary system, yeah. That 3.0 with IBP is gonna do the job just fine. I've got about 17 and a half inches of front usable wheel travel on a 40 inch tall tire. That's pretty nice. That, that is metal to metal. Okay. We are full droop to full tuck and in a complete uh, forward wheel facing position. Obviously on IFS systems, as you turn, as you, you get that little bit of limitation, limitation on there. Yeah. yeah. You know, the whole front shock tower got chopped off and raised and reinforced and got yeah. the space we needed. Yeah. Tie rods, lower arms, bump stop cans, a whole new secondary brace system. I mean, we, we have a new take on this, on, on a wheel liner. Well, a lot of guys think of a wheel liner as just supposed to stop debris from entering the engine bay. That is true in OEM world, but yeah. we made ours extremely strong and extremely rigid, where, where it actually stiffens the entire corner of the front body okay. so that you get no flex on it. It is strong. Yeah, okay. With our wider flare option, yeah. you can put 1,000 pounds up top. Okay. You'll walk on. I don't recommend walking on yeah, a yeah. carbon, yeah, yeah. but if you wanted to, you actually could. The back is just as impressive. It's got a lot going on here. You know, body, you've got a similar kind of flare approach. You've got a very similar line drawn across. Yeah. We wanted everything to flow nicely. Yeah. You see a lot of the body systems out there. When you open the door, you just got this bookshelf uh, sticking yeah. off. So we really wanted to curve it so it's clean and nice. Mm -hmm. Most Bronco body systems actually stop right here at the door okay. and the trim just kind of goes on. Yeah. We, since we did bulge it out, I wanted it to be strong. So we actually kept the primary fender body going all the way down, bolting the factory attachment points. So it's rigid and it's strong. You can actually stand on top of this bad boy. Yes. We had fun with the fuel door. We ended up 3D printing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah like, just clipping it on, just, just like an OE door. Oh, nice. Painting it, you get all the same functionality on it. Okay. Kind of same concept in the rear. We want a bigger shock body. We want a longer shock body. We also didn't want to tub it. We didn't, we didn't want to open up any cavities uh, inside the vehicle. Tub, yeah. So maximizing every millimeter of space we can, our rear shock design, the hoop mount bracket, bolts to the factory tower okay. and really use it. And it uses that factory bolt position as like a jig. It is a bolt on, but it does have two secondary hoops that do weld to the side of the frame okay. to stiffen it all up. Gotcha. Okay. So, 
In the back, we've actually got a 14 inch right. 3.0 primary dual rate spring coilover. Dang. With IBP so and the race series, back, you said eight, 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 front. eight up front, fourteen in the rear. Okay. So that that eight inches is 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 is, is translating to the, those travel numbers in the front, yep. where you would think the fourteen would give us twenty six. No, <laughs> no, 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 it's a solid axle back here. So this fourteen inch coilover with a twelve inch three tube bypass yeah. is netting us about seventeen inches of rear wheel travel in a forty. Gotcha. We're about sixty forty bias in this setup, the shock setup. Okay. So it's 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 got tons of up. It's got plenty down. Right, so right. as you're on the rocks. Yeah. You know, you're really gonna art articulate and you're gonna keep that traction. Yeah, I absolutely freaking love the build. I, I actually I will definitely take you up on getting down to the Come spot by. and uh, to check, check it out. I wanna do is, complete builds. Yeah, I don't oh, okay, gotcha. a lot of people are asking this for the body and I hope I can get to that point where I can keep up. You just wanna bring the vehicle in and boom, full do, build, do ready to go, and then you yeah. pick up, you're ready for the trails. Gotcha, but I can build one in about thirty days. Okay. <laughs> With a schedule, of course. Yeah, in about thirty days. We will be building two doors starting quarter one next year. Thanks, George, so much for the the rundown you got and it. uh we'll stay in touch right. sema 2022 yeah man